We have so far described purely discrete time signals and systems. However, digital control systems are hybrid systems, which means that they contain both discrete time and continuous time parts. In today's video, we try to find continuous time models for the discrete time parts, or more informally, how the discrete parts look like to the continuous parts. In this term, we consider digital classical control. The control system configuration is shown here, where this is the discrete time controller. The output of the controller is converted to a continuous time signal with a zero order hold circuit, which is then fed into the continuous time plant. The output is sampled before it is compared with the reference input to form the error signal. The right hand side contains continuous time signals and the left hand side contains discrete time signals. For our first approach to digital controller design, we will design the discrete time parts to behave in a certain way as viewed from the continuous time part. In order to do this, we need to find a continuous time model of the discrete time parts. In this video, we will look at continuous time models for sampling, zero order hold, as well as the combination of the sampler, a constant controller, and a zero order hold circuit called sample and hold. There are two equivalent models of digital signals. The one is a purely digital signal that is only defined at the discrete time instance k. The other is a train of impulses that is defined for all time. The weights of the impulses are the same as the corresponding values of the purely digital signal. The impulse train formulation is denoted with an asterisk. In this diagram, a subscript A denotes an analog signal. To find a continuous time model of the discrete time parts, we use the impulse train model of discrete time signals. The sampling process can be viewed as follows. At each sampling instant, the value of the analog signal is selected and the weight of the impulse at this sampling instant is set to this value. An equivalent and mathematically convenient model is that of impulse modulation. Here the analog signal is modulated or multiplied with a carrier signal which in this case is a train of unit impulses. We now take the Laplace transform of the sampled signal which is the Laplace transform of the impulse modulated analog signal. After applying the definition of the Laplace transform, switching the sum and integral around and calculating the integral of impulses we get this infinite sum, which is now our Laplace domain model of sampling. An important thing to note here is that sampling is not linear and time invariant, so we cannot express sampling as a transfer function. Another important thing to note is if we define the, a digital signal as the value of the analog signal at the sampling instance and define z as e to the power st, then the Laplace transform of the sampled signal becomes the Z transform. We can therefore interpret the Z transform as the Laplace transform of a sampled signal. This gives us a way to relate continuous and discrete poles. Let's now move on to the zero order hold circuit and try to find a continuous time model for it. We do this by calculating its impulse response which we then Laplace transform to find its transfer function. The zero order hold circuit holds the value of the discrete signal on its input constant for one sampling period. If the discrete signal is modeled as an impulse train, the output holds the weight of the input impulse constant for one sampling period. This is therefore the impulse response of the zero order hold circuit. To find its transfer function, we apply the Laplace transform to the impulse response and after using the Laplace transform definition and calculating the integral, we get this transfer function for the zero order hold circuit. Let's now combine the sampler and zero order hold circuit to form the so-called sample and hold circuit. 
This is equivalent to having a unity gain controller in our digital control system. An analog input signal is sampled and then put through a zero or a hold circuit. The Laplace domain model of the sampler is given by the infinite sum we, we derived on the previous page and the Laplace domain model of the zero order hold circuit is given by this transfer function. Since sampling is not linear and time invariant, we cannot find an exact transfer function to model the sample and hold circuit and we therefore have to find a good approximation. If the sampling frequency is high, that is, the impulses in the impulse train is close together, then we expect the output signal to closely resemble the input signal. This means that the output is approximately equal to the input, which means that the transfer function is approximately 1. If the sampling frequency is low, then we expect this approximation to be quite inaccurate. To support our intuitive reasoning of the previous page, let's look at the frequency response of the sample and hold circuit. Suppose the spectrum of the analog input signal is given by this plot, then the sampled spectrum is given by this plot, where the analog spectrum is repeated at integer multiples of the sampling frequency, here denoted by omega s. If the zero order hold circuit can be viewed as an ideal low pass filter, then the output of the zero order hold circuit is a perfect reconstruction of the input signal provided that the frequency content of the input signal does not exceed the Nyquist frequency, that is, aliasing does not occur. Let's look at the assumption that the zero order hold circuit is an ideal low pass filter. These are the magnitude and phase bode plots of an ideal low pass filter where the magnitude response is constant up to the Nyquist frequency and zero elsewhere and the phase plot is zero everywhere. From the zero order hold transfer function we can plot the magnitude and phase bode plots of the actual zero order hold circuit. At low frequencies the zero order hold magnitude and phase response is close to that of the ideal low pass filter. But for frequencies close to the Nyquist frequency and higher, the zero order hold circuit does not approximate the ideal low pass filter well. The conclusion we can draw is that if the frequency response of the input signal is much lower than the Nyquist frequency, the output of the zero order hold circuit is approximately the input signal and the transfer function of the sample and hold circuit is approximately 1. More informally, if the sampling frequency is much higher than the highest frequency content of the input signal, the transfer function of the zero order hold circuit is approximately 1, which supports our intuitive reasoning of the previous page. We will look at the nonlinear effects as well as a slightly better approximation at a later stage.